Greetings. This is Michael Earlywine, and I'm going to talk about uh, samsara, uh, this world, cyclic world that we live in. And I'm going to talk in particular about the problems or the faults of samsara. And here is where it can get difficult for me because I'd like to share with you some information that may be hard to hear, by that I mean hard to accept and easy to just slough off you know, it's kind of crazy so if you can't hear me through on this I'm sorry and if you can even to get a sense of it or a whiff of it I find this information invaluable especially for those of us that are Dharma practitioners trying to implement the Dharma trying to use and learn the Dharma and I'm really, we're all Dharma pr practitioners. I mean, trying to clear our minds, trying to open our minds, whether we know it or not. I've already um, su suggested that we we have never in our lives, not even ever, been outside or beyond samsara. We were born into it. We are and have always been deeply embedded within samsara and never even once free of it, at least according to the Dharma teachings. That's just the human tradition. That's what's called samsara. And if you understand this, then you know that we, have not, we don't have a clue, although of course we think we do, as to what nirvana, enlightenment, what that is other than as an idea, an abstract conception. We have never known it through experience. And how could we when we don't ever even leave samsara? In fact, everything we know at this point is courtesy of samsara, has its stamp. Even the Dharma itself that we know up to now comes through and by way of, through the courtesy of, and with the stamp of samsara, because samsara is our filter until we realize nirvana, until we get enlightened. In fact, we're totally familiar with samsara when just the opposites where we want to be would be, that would be totally familiar with the nature of our own mind, nirvana. We are not now familiar with the nature of our mind but as mentioned, we've been operating solely for all recorded time within the confines, confines of samsara, samsara. We've always, we've always been there. And of course, the true nature of the mind is also right there within us. But it seems, at least the teachings say, we've accumulated so many obscurations that we can't see through them into our own mind's nature. In other words, our obscurations are our filter to life itself. So what, what then is this our samsaric world made up of? It's like a sheath or a cocoon of shadows, an accumulated opaque ven veneer that we live in and can't see through. This is where we hide. It's kind of like a hermit crab. We have never been without our shell, with this covering of attachments, likes, dislikes, whatever holds our attention or, or entertains us. Samsara, samsara is pretty much all we have ever known. Uh, and most important, or more important to me, and this is the hard one, we're not about to give it up nor would we know what to do, how to live, without all the baffling 
and samsaric cover that's wrapped tightly around us. We are hidden there and hiding from the nature of our own mind and have never yet seen that nature. I mean, the Dharma teachings state this. However, and this is a big however, the day will come when we pass from this life, when we pass on, when we die, all of our samsaric cover, this is what the inner teachings say, all that samsaric cover is going to be dropped and stripped away. And it's written that we will be as naked as a jaybird, as they say. Are we ready for that? From my own experience, I don't think so. Then, after death, we'll have no cover whatsoever to hide in or live through or peek through as we do now using the filter of our own constant entertainment and distractions. And as the Bardo teachings say, the white light of the mind, which is beyond bright to our now dimmed eyes, will cause us to turn away and run to the shadows of rebirth, however and as fast as we can. Just as a leggy plant seedling has to harden off and be hardened off by the light of the sun, so do we right now have to begin getting out of our cocoon of our perpetual entertainments in which we are entrenched and begin to expose ourselves to the light of the mind itself, bit by bit. The light of the mind, like the sun, is always shining, constantly there, yet we habitually ignore it. But it's right there if we can only look. If we wait until we wake up in the bardos after death with the kind of sensitivity to the inner light we now have, which is about none, there's going to be little to no time to get used to, much less harden off to what has been described as the brilliant white light of the mind in the bardo. It will send us, as they say, as it's written, scurrying into the shadows of perhaps another thoughtless rebirth. The light of the mind is shining now. Like the, it's like the sun in our spiritual sky. But somehow we've managed to habitually ignore it and kept our eyes always turned away from it, virtually forever. We can't stand to even look in that inner direction, just like we can't stand to look directly at the solar sun itself. But in this case, we're talking about a spiritual sun, the light of the mind itself that we all have inside us. And that light is shining right now as it always has, yet we have never seen it. We can't bear to even look at it. In fact, this inner light is so arcane, so completely covered and hidden, that we have never, not even a little, seen it. Instead, we are used to and completely enveloped by our, the sum total, total of our attachments, and we're so busy being entertained by those. That's just our habit, and we are loath to change it. Now, how do I know this? I only discovered this as a byproduct of a major stroke when everything in myself was in an instant stripped away, leaving me vulnerable, totally exposed, and unable to find any of my old haunts and entertainments, my filter. What I called myself, what I had called myself, was just instantly shattered in the, in the opening gap that appeared, I was stuck in that white light that I mentioned for days and weeks. It was excruciatingly painful, which is right why I write about it here. I couldn't I could never have imagined this, and I was shocked to the core, completely exposed by the simple lack of having my usual entertainments, my usual cover. They were just gone in that moment. And by entertainments I don't mean watching a movie or playing pool 
but rather the constant filling up of our dance guard until there's not even a ray of light that gets in. Without realizing it, we like to be distracted and entertained pretty much 24 by 7, and we are. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to get across here, that I had no idea, and I bet you don't either, as to how packed our entertainments are, packed so tight that there's not room for us to, to get out or, or any light to get in. None whatsoever. That's the nature of samsara. That's what samsara is, that dimming of the light. In other words, we kind of wrap tight like a mummy in our habitual entertainments. And aside from having ourselves shattered on rare occasions, like when someone in our family dies or something really serious happens and we, our, uh, our self does get shattered. But other than that, there aren't any gaps in our closure. It's tight as a drum. And that's why when I experienced how it was to suddenly have all of my entertainment stripped away, unfortunately, thanks to a major stroke, I had no choice but to take notice and to endure a life devoid of any entertainment cover for weeks on end. All I can say is the lack of my normal covered and the sensitivity of myself to this light was painful beyond words. Here I was in a hospital, surrounded by all the goings on of a hospital stay, while at the same time I was as if I were standing there completely still, exposed and naked in this brilliant light that I had never seen before. It was like I was on a remote desert plain with nothing whatsoever around other than a white hot sun, sunlight in the sky above, a light that I could not even dare to turn and look directly at. We never have. So take what you can from this account, uh, or you can just blow it off, as you will. As time went on after my stroke, my habitual self gradually was reanimated, like Humpty Dumpty put itself back together again and re reestablish my version of samsara again once more. But this took days and weeks. Life is a layered veneer, largely composed of our attachments, our cravings, and we lay them on thick until we literally are mummified, mummified within them so that not a crack of light ever, or hardly ever, gets in. And in that closed state, we wait and we live out our lives here on earth until, our, until at death, all that veneer, what we call our self, is suddenly stripped away and we enter the bardo, as sensitive as I experienced from my stroke, when my self was similarly stripped and shattered. Now I've done my best here to describe the situation that I believe all of us are in but I feel we've never been aware of it. It leads to asking a very simple question. What is this life? 